How about we load my controller director? Watch this. Okay. Oh, the number went up. Yay! Hi, I'm Anna, and today we're going to test some commands to dive into how Cache works in your system. Okay, so let's check CPU Cache first using lscpu, and then we grab dash i with the keyword Cache. This command will only show lines containing the word cache. Now check this out. It provides information about the different levels of CPU cache. My computer has three levels, level one data cache and level one instruction cache. And they are 160 huh? kilobytes each. And there are five instances. So 160 divided by five it gives us what 32 kibibytes per core. By the way, kibibytes are different from kilobytes. Mm. A kilobyte has 1000 bytes, but one kibibyte has uh, 1024 mm. bytes because mm. computers work in binary. That's why kibibytes use base 2 and not 10. Mm. Do you see how level 3 cache is the largest and shared across all cores, while level 1 is the smallest but closest to the CPU, so it provides the fastest access. Now let's try a command to display the information about the system's memory. Check this out. The total memory breakdown is in <laughs> gigabytes. Look, 1.2 gigabytes of RAM is actively being used by processors. We have 32 megabytes of shared memory, which is used for multiple processes like shared libraries. Then we have 1.5 gigabytes of buffer and cache. It's used for disk um, I.O. performances. The system can reclaim this if needed. Look, we have two gigabytes of swap cache available. And you might be wondering what swap means. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. When your primary memory is full, the processes use swap section of the hard drive. It acts like a backup memory, but is much slower than actual RAM. Um, now let's look inside the PROC folder, specifically at the PROC MAM info file. We can filter by word cached again to get more details about how much space is cached. Look, the output shows that cache memory is approximately 1.45 kilobytes. Check this out. There is nothing under the swap cached section. We can free this cache space if we want to. Um, we'll do it later. Okay. But now let's use another command. VMstat with flag S. Let's filter the cache information again using grab and let's put cache in parentheses. Look, this shows that my system has approximately 1.86 gigabytes of swap cache. Um, interesting, different commands report different numbers for swap caching. So the mem info file is about things kept in RAM for quick access, when vmstat is about things that were swapped to the hard drive but are still partially kept in RAM to make things faster. And I think that's why we have different numbers here. Now let's check if um, I have any files in this directory, so let's use a less. Okay, so I do have output.txt. We can use sudo fincore command on this output.txt file. And we will see the amount of physical memory it uses. Uh, look, it doesn't look like it uses anything. <laughs> we can use another command. How about vm touch to see the file's memory usage. Oh, vm touch is not installed. Okay, um, we can do apt install vm touch. 
Permission denied. We hit in one roadblock after another. Okay, let's try sudo apt install vm touch instead. Okay, this should work. I just wait for the luck. Okay, I'm tired of waiting. <laughs> Are you? Um, maybe some background processes are holding the lock. Oh, let's check. Let's try kill all apt, apt get and the package processes. Ah, no processes found. Okay, um, huh? what we can do is we can list all the running processes uh, using psaux command and we search for apt and the package processes using grab. This gives us PID numbers for running processes. So instead of killing all of them, we can just kill <laughs> we can just kill one at a time using their PID number. Let's see what happens. Let's kill this one. Well, we can kill this one. Let's see if I can list the rest of them all in one line, okay? These were not found. Huh? Okay. Um, what is this number? I don't think it's a PAD number. I think it's um, referring to the memory usage, but hey, what the heck? Let's try, Let's try kill it too, right? We're just having fun. Okay, no such process. At least I was right that it's not a PAD number. Okay, good to know. Um, so we killed everything we could. Let's use PSAUX command again to check the processes one more time. Um, see, we only have one running process. Hey, let's kill it to be safe. Okay, it's not found. So I guess it's terminated itself after grab search was completed. Okay, let's update our packages just in case. Are you ready? Now let's try sudo apt install vm touch again. Looks like it's working now. Now let's list the files in our working directory again. What was the name of that file we wanted to look at? Right, output.txt. We can use vm touch now. Uh, still not cached. Uh -huh. Maybe the file is empty. It was showing zero when we used FinCore, right? To check the memory usage. Let's check with cat if our file has anything. So if you use dev-null, the system will redirect the output to the black hole. Let's see if we can get different output using vm touch. <laughs> uh, nothing. I guess sending the output in the void wasn't helpful when we were checking if file has anything. Uh, what else we can learn about our file? Um, getting off the track here. It has read and write permissions. How about we use regular cat command to check if there's anything inside the file? Right. It's empty. Okay. That explains why nothing was cached. Let's add some content into it using nano. And I'll type, okay, hello, this is my output file. Now let's exit the nano and use cat again to confirm. <laughs> okay, all the work and finally we have hello in our file. Yay! Okay, good job. And, uh, all right, now let's try vm touch output txt and finally resident pages 100% cached. The file is now stored in memory. Now let's monitor the memory usage in real time with watch command. Okay, so we type watch dash n and one. We will be looking in a procmam info again for cached information. This command will update the cached memory 
and one means that the value to update is one second. Oh, yeah. I forgot to add cached in there. Oh, no biggie, let's fix it. Okay, opening a new terminal window. We want to see all the files and directories we can test our cache performance with. Now, let's try vmtouch-t with our output file. This will load the file into the memory without locking it. Um, hmm, nothing changed in the other window. Let's add extra parentheses if there is a conflict between commands. Okay, um, here you go. We can try to load an entire directory if we want to use in VM touch. How about we load my controller directory? Watch this. Oh, the number went up. <laughs> now let's test freeing up our cache memory, okay? First type, sudo sync to make sure that all data is written from RAM to disk before clearing the caches. Then we use echo3 and pipe it into sudo t proc-sys-vm-drop caches. This will write three into the drop caches file. So this command forces the system to flash all data from memory buffers and clears the cache. You may think, what does three mean? And Linux allows you to drop different types of cache. One to drop only page cache, then we have two to drop only directory entries and inodes, and three is to drop all caches, page cache, directory cache, and inodes. So we'll be dropping all of it. Let's test it. Look, the size of cache data dropped significantly. Yes, okay. Um, there is another command I want to try. Let's use VM touch again, but uh, with a flag dash E. And we will use it again on the controller directory. Uh, this command with flag E is supposed to evict directory from the cache. Let's check. Um, we have 33, 23, 24 kilobytes cached right now. Let's run eviction command. Wait, what just happened? Did the size go up? What? Okay, so what if we use flag dash T now? Okay. We have 33, 23, 56 kilobytes cache right now. Let's run it. Okay, and we get 33, 31, 80 now. So the size went up and this kind of makes sense, right? Because we touched them. But if we use the E flag again, we get, okay. So the size went down now. <laughs> but anyway, do you know why did it go up when we use it after we cleared out the cache? If you know, leave me a comment below. But if you're wondering why caches work the way they do, I have a whole video explaining the theory behind them. Check it out. And hey, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time. And signing off. Bye.